What's going on? Welcome back to the studio. Today, a simple and easy way to make your chords much more interesting. Uh, let's jump in straight away. I've got an instance of the Korg M1 piano here, just very simply setting out probably the most easiest chord progression in history or the most used pop chord progression in history. Um, let's have a listen. You'll probably recognize it. very standard, isn't it? Now, if we want to make that sound a little bit different, there's a few things in which we can do uh, to play around with it and subtle changes that can make a big difference. So let's start with a little basic on music theory. If we take a look at the first chord here, we've got C, E, and G. That's the root note, the third, and the fifth of the chord of C major. Now, to make this... Uh, more interesting, we can do one of two things. We can either provide a first inversion or a second ver inversion of the chord. It's not often done on the first uh, chord, but you can, and this is where it allows your creativity to run free. If we have a look at the second chord, because we're going down a step in this progression, Rather than going down, what happens if we wanted to kind of continue the same energy and push on upwards? What we can do is make it an inversion of itself. Now, an inversion means there's either first inversion or second inversion, like we said. An inversion means that we're going to change around the order of those three notes. Very simply, let's try the second inversion, which involves having the root note above both the third and the fifth. That then allows us to have the same notes down the bottom here, so a continuous transition of energy, and then the G going up to the A provides us a moving on upwards kind of feel. So let's listen to that. So that's the first inversion, uh, sorry, second inversion of the chord A minor, bringing the A on top, the root note, then having the fifth and the third. Another example we can do is create a second inversion, uh, sorry, first inversion on this F chord. Um, so we'll bring the F back up and we'll also bring up the A. Now, what this is doing is having the third on top and then the root note and then the fifth on the bottom. This is the first inversion of a chord. If you allow the energy to still transition upwards, as we're doing here from the E to the F, we're still climbing in the phrase. So we're going starting note up a little bit, up a little bit. Let's have a listen. Only slightly, but these small steps make a huge deal in the grand scheme of things of energy. Now, if we listen to how it ends, That's coming back down. It's like going up, 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 down. And we want to change that around maybe again, make it more interesting. We can bring up the G and just have not so much of a shift down in energy. Again, bring up the B. We could even go up again the first time. And then the second time we repeat this phrase, come down. So let's try and show you that. If I drag this out again. And then we can duplicate. So the first time we can have it down the bottom and then the second time going up. Let's have a listen. Simple ways to phrase the chord slightly differently so that you can come up with a better sounding and not so generic sounding chord progression. Um, the final thing that we're going to jump into that you can change to make this chord progression more interesting is change to the relative minor uh, in the key. Now, 
This doesn't always work in every situation, but it's a great one to try and to trial out how it sounds over, sorry, under maybe a melody or a vocal line or something like that. Just to give it that one chance where you might change that chord and provide that subtle difference to that particular section. So if we bring out this chord again, the G major chord down here, to make the G major into a relative minor, the relative minor is usually the fifth, and, um, well, it is the fifth, <laughs> the fifth of the chord, but a minor chord. So in this case, uh, sorry, not the fifth, the seventh of the chord, and uh, it's the minor chord. So in this case, <clears throat> for a G major, it's an E minor. So let's put in E minor, which is E, G, and B. But what I might do is flip it there. Let's have a listen to the relative minor in that position instead. It does still work and it does throw in that little curveball of a slightly different chord on the end there. Now that was a, just a simple explanation, a simple uh, version of it. You can play around with so many different things. Imagine when you're stacked on top of each other, you've got one playing the relative major, one playing the relative minor against each other. It's gonna work as long as there's not too many clashing notes. There's gonna be some real creative things going on in that particular section. So I highly encourage you to try uh, a few of those things. The first inversion, second inversion, flipping of the note order around. Um, the second thing was to do what we just did there, the relative minor. Um, actually, I'm gonna give you a hot tip, give you one extra one. Um, another one that you can do is add elements which are you know, progressing out of the three note range and maybe moving into a fourth note and adding in something slightly different. Um, in particular, a major seventh or minor seventh is probably like the very next step to go to that's not too into things like diminished chords and all of those crazy things. So if we have a look um, on the first chord, we can, we've got C major, um, which is C, E, G. Now we've got A minor here on the second chord, A, C, E. Now if we continued on that E, up another, uh, well, up to the seventh of that chord of the A minor, we're gonna get another G. So if we duplicate across, sorry, bring that down, and duplicate across that G. So now you're gonna to listen to the C major chord going into the A minor seventh chord, which is essentially the exact same as the C minor, but done with the A root note on the bottom. Let's listen. So the, the chord just adds in that A. Another simple one. Um, again, you can play around with it, but if I had, say, the A and the G next to each other, we'd get a little bit of dissonance. So you can hear, because they're so close together, it creates that little clash sound. Now, that's okay because it provides tension resolution, but only done in the right way. If you've got lots of things clashing like that, it's not gonna sound good. So let's try just leaving it separated across the octaves. Uh, you can also play it uh, split, so you could have it, say, half the note like this, so. Now, that just adds in a little movement note and also splits up the chord so it's not being dissonant and leads in nicely to the next one. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, those few tips on chords. Please leave me a like, leave me a comment if you did, and uh, make sure to share it around, subscribe, so you can see some more videos. I don't need to tell you. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. See you again soon, and hope you guys are staying well. See you soon.